vibrant provincial capital inside of the Pyrenees and first and foremost a Catalonian city. Ieda has for thousands of years witnessed many of the major milestone events which have marked the country's history. Here at the newly built Ieda Alguera Airport north of the city, however, a different type of history is about to be made as a sport with a long tradition that makes a groundbreaking return to Europe. Organiser Jeff Zaltman sets the scene. Well, we're here in Lleida, in Catalonia, Spain, at the Lleida Alguaire Airport, which is a great facility. It's a brand new airport, just a few years old, and they're really looking to grow. So as one of those uh, steps in the effort, uh, they've invited us to come here and race. And so uh, what the spectators are going to see today is an air race. This is actually called a Formula One class of airplane. And we've got eight airplanes racing together at the same time around a tight circuit, which is only two kilometers end to end. 10 meters above the ground at over 400, 450 even kilometers per hour. First one across the line wins. So a simple concept and not an entirely new one, it has to be said. Since the earliest days of air shows, the spectacle of racing around a course was the one which fired the crowd's imagination. And in the 1940s, a racing class, Formula One, was established. So nearly 70 years of evolution has brought Formula One to a pinnacle. This is the world's oldest class of air racers, the Formula One, which is a formula of size, weight, and engine description, and so on. In Reno, we have been racing since 1965 or 64. Uh, they used to have lots of races in Europe as well, so it's time to do it again. What's happening here is we have three different organizations. We have the British, the French, and the American Formula One associations coming together and doing an international event. So this is a uh, relatively new thing for all involved, and it's very exciting. In France, especially, and in Europe, but especially in France, it's often the case that you're racing alone. There just aren't that many pilots around. But now here, with the Americans coming, we need to give this event a lot of publicity because it will be a great spectacle. And hopefully that'll help rejuvenate the sport in France and across Europe. And then maybe we'll get more pilots from Spain, Germany, England and Italy involved in air racing. So history in the making, but what of the machinery involved? As the pilots themselves explain, the hardware is very much purpose built. This is a Cassett. The Cassett is one of the most wonderful aircrafts I've ever flown in my life. It's right there at the top ten. A lot of fun, very agile, very high performance, very, very fast. It's a delightful aircraft in every regard. You truly strap it on. It's so tiny. The engine has to be a 200 cubic inch Continental, which is rated at 100 horsepower. It's the same engine that would power a Cessna 150, which cruises at 90 or 100 miles an hour. We take that same engine, plug it into a very small and light airframe, and we get speeds over 250 miles an hour. These little airplanes are very swift to fly. It's, it's a, it really is a joy just to fly them. It's like driving a sport motorcycle, it's fun. Flying these, is, these are the sport motorcycles of airplane. Nimble, fun to fly. Some of the best pilots in the world have started right here. So these formulas absolutely have the best pilots for racing in the world because it's a stick and rudder airplane. It's not a very complicated, um, motor management airplane, you just simply have to be a good pilot to be able to be successful in this sport. It's not a rich man's sport, it's not a poor man's sport, it's like a sport that everyone can have fun and be competitive at. No matter if you're, if you're wealthy or not, if you're wealthy or not. To do more, just fiberglass, foam, good ideas, that, that, that is worth nothing. It's just time, a little bit of time and and good judgment and, and getting surrounded by the guys who know, the guys have been there before, who will tell you if it's safe. And if there's an undisputed king of painstaking development by trial and error, it's the fastest of the American visitors, Jay Jones. All we can do, different than a stock stock motor, we go inside and polish you know, things. Like on, on all the rods and anything that moves, if it's rough and texture on the outside, we polish that off because it is moving inside oil and air inside the case. We, with all this cleaning and all this perfectly balancing that we do, we bring it up to 4,100 RPMs 
and we should get 150 to 185 horses out of it. And by being so light and so clean, uh, no parasitic drag, that's how the racers become faster, more efficient. So efficiency, the key word, but speed, the ultimate goal. Especially now, as the time came to prove just who could establish themselves as king of the Catalonian skies. Qualifying would determine grid order for the two feature races and give the Spanish crowd their first taste of Formula One air racing and us a chance to run through the 11 pilots and their planes. Patrick Gajan started to fly gliders when he was just 16, but only took up Formula One racing in 2013 with his plane Sicole, a CP80 in Warbird colours. Best recorded average 242 kilometres an hour over the course. Trevor Jarvis had flown his tailored JT2 Titch all the way from the UK to celebrate the completion of its 36-year build. 247 kilometres an hour was his best lap average. A big step up now to 273 kilometres an hour, Bernard Marici with his home-built MP205 Buzzard, which he's raced since 2003. Bernard, a mechanic for Airbus Industries. Another Frenchman, another Bassard. Stanislas Dameron works as a design engineer for Dassault Aviation. He's been a pilot since 2007 and clocked 50 hours in this plane, 285 kilometres an hour. All the way from Scotland, Des Hart is an engineer in the oil industry and here to experience racing for the very first time. The plane, a race classic Cassett 111N and his best qualifying performance, 294 kilometres an hour. Guy Chereau has raced his Formula One racer, a Cassut 111M, in several French air shows and pylon races. And that experience shows through with a best average of 297 kilometres an hour. 318 kph. Vincent Martinez is an equally experienced aerobatic pilot and won the French Formula One Championship in 99 and 2000. He helped to build the Kasut he races and started Formula One pylon racing in 98. 353 kilometers an hour and it's a step up to Sweden's Tom Richard, a long-time resident of the USA where he's built up extensive race experience. The plane, another of the Kasuts. Faster still, 377 kilometers an hour. Steve Temple works with the US military in Germany and is a former Rookie of the Year at the Reno Air Races and placed third in the US National Championships. The plane, a highly developed GR7 Panther. Jay Jones from Colorado has over 17 years of experience in international Formula One racing. Jay is an aircraft design engineer and tirelessly develops the Kasut, which here gave him a best average of 380 kilometers an hour in qualifying. But taking the US races by storm with a best average of 386 kilometers an hour, a spectacularly different and strictly home designed and built Arletti II of French pilot Christian Gill, a professor of mechanical engineering who started flying in 1987. So a combination of clever design and pilot experience leading the field through the early stages. So we ask, what is it that makes the perfect race pilot? The purity is in the, the skill of the pilot because it, it's absolutely telltale from half a second to half a second where you over controlled or where you maybe controlled just perfectly. You have to improve your skill all the time to, to stay in the front and this challenge is a lot of fun. So small airplane fun and racing a great challenge. Smooth. You have to be smooth and what I would call lack of ham hands. So when a, I was a boy, if you're over controlling an airplane, they would say you're flying with two big pieces of ham as opposed to your fingertips. So you try to avoid the ham hands. In formation flying, everybody wants to be the leader. If somebody's in front of you, you're really, you don't get the feeling of speed. You're just seeing if you're closing in on that person or see where it's gonna be. And it's just a balance. You know, the mo motion and trying to keep out of the prop wash or the prop wake. You know, we're all just you know, trying to keep that, that smooth, comfortable balance and be able to pass it and you know, get, get around the course the quickest. Well, plenty of experience on hand then, but some rookies also on the grid here in Catalonia, benefiting, as they explain, from some fast company. It's pretty exciting. You know, the first couple of days, you, you kind of think, what am I doing here? This is, this is 
pretty, pretty terrifying. But the other guys in the course know what they're doing. You know when they're going to turn in. You're all turning in at the same point. You know, everyone's taking similar lines. So you learn to anticipate that and get a bit of confidence. Once I got clear of the couple of aircraft in front of me, it's really settling down and enjoying it. You know, it's great tearing around at these kind of speeds around the pylons. It doesn't feel particularly hairy once you're in the zone, as it were. You know, it's, it's good fun. I'd not raced uh, before I came down here and so they've been teaching us through the week and they say they're pitching us with the hot aeroplanes and hot pilots um, so and they're all so helpful as well they give you tips you know how to pass and uh, you know just how to look after the aeroplane and make sure it's flying fast I'm going around the, the track you know, a couple of seconds faster each time I go out you know by listening to the advice how about trying this or well, that was good keep doing that and it works so yeah fantastic experience and so as the crowds here in Catalonia start to build for the culmination of a spectacular weekend's racing, we'll be back with highlights of both the silver and gold finals after the break. Join us then.